Uh, good morning, grade 11s. Today we're going to look at partnerships. So there's two aspects of partnerships that's very important. So number one is we're going to have to understand how the general ledger works. And then secondly, um, we need to understand the difference in terms of the financial statements. So just as an introduction, um, up till now, uh, what you've been doing is you've been doing sole traders. So with sole traders, in terms of the characteristics of a sole trader, is that it's normally one person and uh, it's not a legal entity. So what do we mean by not a legal entity? The main thing is that the sole trader doesn't really pay tax. So in other words, you'll notice at the end of the financial year, all that happens is that your, your, your net profit, your profit and loss closes off to your, closes off to your capital account. Whereas when it comes to your partnership, which we, we are now busy with, with partnerships, uh, which we do in grade 11, what happens is you have two to 20 people. And normally, there's, al there's also no legal entity over here. But uh, each partner is responsible for their own taxation. So to help with that process, you'll notice that everything that, that has to do with a partner needs to eventually go to their current accounts. So we're just going to look at some, some interesting things around partnerships and what are some of the changes that, that reflect what we need to understand in terms of partnerships. So what's unique about partnerships is that there's normally something called a partnership agreement. So two people start the business and when it comes to the business they have to set up an agreement. So the agreement is basically going to be a, along the lines of salaries. So, so, so what kind of salaries are partners going to be earning, depending on whether they're working in the business or not. Then we just need to understand the concept of interest on capital. So what happens is that just, with, just as you have with sole traders, partners each contribute capital. So cap interest on capital must be calculated and normally the, the partners would come to an agreement as to how interest on that capital must be calculated. And then oftentimes uh, these are the stipulations in terms of bonuses to partners. So there might be a partner that gets a bonus. And lastly, you have, you have wh what are you going to do with the remaining profits? So the remaining profits need to be split in a specific way. So this is basically the, the four aspects of what would come into the partnership agreement. So for example, you could have, you could have John and Joe starts a partnership called J and J partnerships, J and J traders. Yeah, let's call it J and J traders. And um, they decide that they're going to buy and sell a product. So when you start the business, I just want to remind you guys that the basics of any business is that it's one of three types of businesses. Okay. So the type of business is important. So the type of business they're starting is they're starting a, a trading business. So everything that you've learned around a trading business, sales, cost of sales, trading stock, all of those things are still applicable for trading business from day to day, month to month. So that stays the same. They could also have decided they wanted to start a service business. In our case, we're saying that they've started a trading business. They could have decided they wanted to start a service business or they could have decided they want to start a manufacturing business. Um, I'm recording this in the middle of COVID-19 
in South Africa. So you'll find that lots of guys are manufacturing masks at the moment. So they're doing both. So you don't have to just have one business. You could have manufacturing something as well as trading it. So that the first thing is that the type of business that you're looking at, you, you want to try and understand that. And then the second thing in the case of um, the, the form of enterprise, when somebody starts, starts a business, you have your form of enterprise. So I just want to give you guys a high level indication of what types of enterprises you have. So you guys are familiar with, you're all familiar with the, uh, the sole trader. So that's, that's the type of business that you've done since you started accounting in grade eight. You've done sole traders. So that's one type of business. Uh, right now you're being introduced to partnerships. They are non-profit entities. We don't call them businesses, we call them entities or organizations. And then you've got your companies. So it's important to just locate where you're at in terms of understanding that we're currently busy with a trading business and we are busy with a partnership. Okay, so if we, if we have a look at the general ledger steps, these are the steps that need to be followed. We first need to bring down the balances for our various accounts. Okay, so we need to bring down the balances for our various accounts for Capital John, Capital Joe, current account John. So you'll notice here that there's some new accounts that, that you haven't done before. You're used to the capital accounts, but what you now have is you basically have a capital account for each partner. You're used to drawings accounts, but you have a drawings account for each partner. What's new is you have, you've got a current account John and a current account Joe. So those are also owner's equity accounts, just like capital is. But the difference there is that those owner's equity accounts are basically going to be used at the end of every financial year. It's kind of, think of it as like a short-term equity account, whereas your capital accounts would be your long-term equity accounts. Drawings is also an equity account, but that has a debit balance because of the fact that that is going to decrease your owner's equity. Remember, owner's equity increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. So just one point to, to take note of is that what would happen is that if the partnerships had an agreement that a certain uh, partner would receive, say, 10,000 Rand a month as a salary, that 10,000 Rand isn't going to go into the salary account of that partner every month. That 10,000 Rand would go into the drawings account of the partner every month. And at the end of the financial year, we bring that into account over here. So please just take note of that. So whether it's bonuses or whatever, during the financial year, it goes into the drawings account of that partner. And at the end of the financial year, we're going to basically put it, it, it uh, the accounts will basically cancel out. So for example, you might have drawings of 120,000, but the salary account will then increase with 120, so that will cancel it out. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to debit my interest on capital account and I'm going to credit my capital account. So I'm debiting interest on capital and I credit current account John and then I'm going to credit and I'm going to do the same thing. Now you'll notice with interest on capital, we don't really write down interest on capital John, interest on capital Joe, I think somehow as accounting conventions go, we don't really do that. Right, so that's basically what we would do in terms of our step uh, step 3.3. And on the next page, we're going to move on to uh, the next step, which is step number. It could be step 3.4, but I prefer to have it as a separate step because it's quite a quite a quite a big step over there. Okay, right, so step four is we have to bring into account the remaining profits or losses. Remember, so far we've brought into account salaries, 
interest on capital, bonuses to partners. So a calculation is firstly we have to calculate the remaining profits, 4.1, is we take our net profit and we minus those um, three things, salaries, interest on capital, bonuses to partners, that will give us our remaining profit, that's 4.1. 4.2 we have to then take that remaining profit and we basically have to divide it according to the partnership agreement so they will tell us whether it must be divided equally whether it must be divided according to a ratio say 2 is to 3 whether it must be divided according to the capital ratio at the beginning of the year or end of the year it could be beginning of the year or it could even be the end of the year so I've just given you guys an example over here. Um, for example, if it's 200,000 is to 400,000, you'll see that's a ratio of 1 is to 2. How did I get that? You just divide both by 200,000 and you get 1 is to 2 in this case. And then um, what you're going to debit basically in each case is you're going to debit the appropriation account if it's a profit that, that was made because then it's the remaining profits. And you're going to credit current account John and then similarly with his portion of the remaining profit and then you're going to debit the appropriation and credit current account Joe with his portion of the remaining profit so in our example if for example the ratio is 1 is to 2 and the remaining profit let's say for example the remaining profit was 100,000 Rand okay then what would happen is that you take 100,000 multiplied by 1 over 3. Why 3? Because you've got to say 1 plus 2. And that will basically go to John. So that so John is basically going to get 33,000. In fact, just to make our example a bit easier, I'm going to make it 90,000 Rand. So that we don't have to work with decimals. So let's say the remaining profit worked out to 90,000. It basically means that, that, that John would basically get 90,000 multiplied by multiplied by 1 over 3. Remember you've got to add that up. It gives you 3 over there. Okay? So that's very important. You've got to add it up. So John would basically get 30,000 of the remaining profit. And then Joe, because he, he had a higher capital at the end of the year, He's basically going to get 90,000 multiplied by 2 over 3. So he's going to basically get 60,000. Let me just write my 3 properly there. Apologies for that. So that's 2 over 3, so that gives you 60,000. So there we go. So I mean, you've got your, your 30,000 and you've got your 60,000 and Bob's your uncle. You can then basically take the 30,000 that's going to go to current account John and the 60,000 is going to go to current account Joe right we've just got one or two more steps to go and then we basically completed with all these steps okay guys so um, step five is basically to close off the drawings accounts to the current accounts the way we do that is we debit current account John credit drawings John we debit current account Joe, credit drawings Joe. It's very important when you when you do the contra account that you have to indicate current account John, not just uh, not just current account. And then the last step is to basically balance the current accounts. So your current account should look something like this over here. By the time we're done, um, so for example, if I look at current account John. We could have a balance here so for example let's say that this happens at the end of feb so it's 2020 feb over here that's our naming convention we're going to say balance brought down now remember i told you guys in terms of this step they have to give that to you so let's say they have a balance brought down of ten thousand, and then you've got your 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 salary you remember we've got to take into account your salary So your salary, John, let's say John gets a salary of 10,000 a month. So that means that's going to be 120,000. Then John got a bonus. Bonus John. 
that bonus is say 10,000 for the year and John got interest on capital of let's say we work that out remember we said that 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 John is is has to work it out on I think when we worked out that interest on capital it was 90,000 times a third yeah so um oh no that's the remaining profit that was the remaining profit so the interest on capital let's say that it worked out to 20,000 so you're going to put that 20,000 there and then the remaining profit that John got was 30,000 so then that's going to that that would have come from the appropriation account so that's going to be the 30,000 there and then basically what would happen on the debit side is you're going to now have your drawings remember we said that uh, step five is your drawings so if John during the course of the year he took every month he took his 10,000 and it means the drawings could roughly be worth roughly 120 but maybe he didn't take his full drawings he only took a hundred thousand what we would do there is we basically just go 2020 Feb and then the drawings account to close off here but what I, what I was saying is you got to write the drawings John because that's the actual contra account so let's say John only took a hundred thousand so then so then basically after this we would balance this account um, unfortunately I don't have enough space over here to balance it um, but you when you balance an account by this time in grade 11 you should know how to balance you'd add all of this up so it's 10, 130, 140, 150, 160. So we've got 190,000 over here. 190,000 over here. And then over here, you're basically going to have your, um, your balance carried down. And then your balance brought down would be on the credit side. So your balance carried down over here is going to be 190 minus that. So it's 90,000 and then balance brought down on the other side would basically be 90,000 as well. Okay, so that's basically, I just wanted to show you guys that we will still do a practical example, but that's basically how the current account would basically look. Okay. Um,